welcome to this class on uh, pre programmed reactions part 2. We have seen what are pre programmed reactions in the previous class. In today's class, in this class, we will discuss um, what are the features of uh, pre programmed reactions, perturbations to vertical posture are corrected through pre programmed reactions, and how corrective stumbling reactions can be considered to be a form of pre programmed reactions. Okay. Importantly, Note that you know pre programmed reactions depend significantly on instruction to the subject or the intention of the subjects. The subject is told to not respond, do not intervene. Actually, it is not clear what this means. If you if you cause a perturbation and tell the subject do not worry, do not intervene, it is difficult uh, for them to not do something. Uh, this is like the example of uh, you know a classroom in which you tell the students to not do something or uh, you know don't think about the monkey everybody immediately thinks about the monkey so you it, it's difficult to not do something so there are several ways in which uh, you know you can ensure that people do not focus on that on what you don't want them to do by the way also it is not clear whether the subjects have followed your instruction you want them to not respond to a perturbation how can you be sure that they did not respond to that perturbation? Actually, there is a way of doing that. If the response to the perturbation is caused by say 2 or 3 or 5 muscles, for example, the response can be caused by 5 muscles, you can measure EMG of those 5 muscles in sync with the perturbation. So, when the perturbation happens, just some few hundred milliseconds just before the perturbation there will be a baseline EMG activity by the way that is never going to be 0 there is going to be a baseline EMG activity. If after the perturbation also the same baseline activity continues for the, the next couple of hundred milliseconds after the perturbation then the person is not reacting. If the baseline activity has shifted to a higher level, then the person is reacting. If you ask them, did you follow my instruction? They will tell you, yeah, I followed the instruction. Whether they are telling the truth or not is something that we can find out by the EMG. Okay. So, that is that's one way in which you can ensure that, uh, you know. So, in particular, it is important in the case of pre-programmed reactions, if you tell the subject to do not intervene, they can reduce the amplitude of the response or sometimes the response completely disappears, there is no response that also is possible. So, there is a strong dependence on instruction or context. So, that means, it there must be it is be, we would immediately believe we would immediately hypothesis there must be cortical involvement in this okay, because there is thinking. So, by the way that does not mean that the execution needs to involve cortical involvement that is different and also not just that there is a activity that can happen not just during shortening, but also during lengthening, but also in cases where the length does not change. And also we said earlier that there is a poor correlation the amplitude of the stimulus and uh, the amplitude of the response. Okay. One thing that we have seen in the previous class is that if the perturbation is applied in the presence of uh, you know vibrations high frequency vibrations like that so on and so forth. If the perturbation is applied in the presence of vibrations what we have seen in the previous class is that in the presence of vibration the H reflex or the T reflex amplitude goes down. Are the, the monosynaptic reflexes are suppressed by vibrations, but the M23 reactions are not suppressed by the vibrations. So, vibrations have an influence on the monosynaptic refle reflex, but uh, not on the pre programmed reactions. Okay. So, also what happens during uh, corrections of vertical posture? So, remember one thing to note is that you know human uh, posture bipedal locomotion bipedal uh, stance is relatively unique very special case and there is a reason for us to hypothesize that this uh, posture is always in a pre programmed state or our perturbations to this posture when somebody is pushing me that is there is going to be a response that is uh, going to arrive at latency similar to pre programmed reactions because we do not want to fall 
it is uh, it would be reasonable for us to expect that you know unexpected perturbations of the vertical posture will lead to responses uh, similar to pre programmed reactions okay so what that means is that uh, you know the, they will occur at latencies that is between the phase fixed shift flux array m1 and uh, the voluntary reactions which is 200 milliseconds between that so or, or in other words it will happen at around 80 milliseconds 70 to 100 milliseconds right. importantly it is worth noting that you know the response in the case of uh, reflexes is going to be muscle specific whereas in the case of uh, pre programmed reactions they are specific to the mechanical action so if the mechanical effect of the perturbation is to make me fall down in the say on that side then the response is going to bring me back to that side the response is going to be in that direction whereas if the mechanical action of the perturbation is pushing me in that direction then the the response is going to bring me back in this direction so the response is not muscle specific but rather specific to the mechanical effects of the perturbation okay and also not necessarily to the exact point of application the perturbation may be applied to any point or to any muscle if the mechanical effect is such that it is going to cause perturbation in a, or fall or, or some disturbance in a particular direction the response is going to be in the opposite direction which is why we call this as functional stretch reflex is it not it is a functional so depending uh, it is not a crude it is relatively crude when compared with a, a, a voluntary response but it is not a crude response that has no sensitive sensitivity to what is the direction of the mechanical perturbation it is not like that so depending on the direction of the perturbation or the mechanical effect the response will be in the opposite direction regardless of where the perturbation is applied okay and this can happen independently of the afferent source so it need not be which uh, we said this earlier that you know uh, that this can happen depending on uh, whether the afferent source is uh, you know visual auditory what vestibular etc etc an example is uh, the case of uh, having a hot liquid uh, in, in a moving platform now these are uh, great experiments someone should do these experiments um, so suppose i am having a hot liquid in this or uh, i or the let's just say that this is uh, empty okay let's just say that uh, this cup is empty okay now i am standing on a moving platform somebody is just you know moving me and or in other words a wheeled platform like this right that as, as it has been shown here so wheeled platform now if people are pushing me you know my response is going to be something right when the cup is empty let us say that it is filled with a lot of play dough okay or you know clay that is used for playing kids use this right I am fill, filling it with that and I am having it in my hand let us say its mass is you know 200 grams for example or for 300 grams whatever some number somebody is pushing me the response is going to be something we record this response okay let us suppose the initial condition of all these uh, you know experiments are the same all these trials actually that is very difficult to ensure because you can you cannot be sure that the initial conditions are always the same there is no such thing like that but let us assume that is true okay and in the third case I am having a hot liquid I am having coffee very hot piping hot coffee in this right or some, something like that and it is full and now somebody is pushing me the reaction will be you know something now if I compare the three reactions right the empty cup versus the cup filled with play dough and the cup filled with uh, coffee the response will functionally change depending on uh, you know whether I have the hot liquid or not in the first two cases for me not falling down is an important consideration that is my intention my intention is you know I am not really worried about you know this going down like that or, uh, or uh, play dough falling down because that is less of a concern I should not fall down that is my aim in the first two cases in the third case though somehow it is possible that you know it is important for me to not spill the hot liquid on my body because it could be a source of embarrassment but more importantly it could be dangerous it could scald my body it could uh, you know cause uh, 
you know injury to my body i don't want that to happen so then the response will vary significantly not slightly so in other words the intention plays an important role and there is definitely a great amount of context specificity in that case okay and so there is uh, there is this there are these corrections of vertical posture which are uh, almost always in a pre programmed state and any corrections to uh, the vertical posture that happen at around that latency between 80 millisecond latency can be considered to be considered to be a pre programmed reaction okay now the, in the case of locomotion for example we keep walking we take step by step right if you are taking one step that can and by the way let us remember one thing as we are making a, a movement let us say that I am standing and I am uh, making a fast arm movement right uh, before we go to the next topic. Suppose I am standing and I am making a fast arm movement or you know I am holding an object that I am dropping I am holding a heavy object 10 kg object that I am dropping right. If I am doing that let us remember that the perturbation is caused by, by my own actions. I have done something that perturbs my uh, equilibrium that has uh, affected my equilibrium. Even in that case the response will be there that could be pre programmed reaction. So, in other words the response or the perturbation can be triggered by an external source or by the subject uh, himself. So, that means some in even in cases where there is a perturbation that is caused by the subject's own movements there is going to be a response by the way so that means that when i so this we do all the time we walk and we do something else while we are walking there is an that which by itself is a movement and we are like by the way a frequent thing that we do is you know seeing the phone but we also do many other things while walking so while walking so the the other mo it's possible that walking serves as a perturbation for the other activity that you are doing or the other activity serves as a perturbation for the walking that you are doing so uh, it's possible that could happen okay uh, so during locomotion uh, it's important to to have you know stability sufficient amount of stability so this is also another activity in which there is uh, you know sufficient pre programmed uh, response uh, that is available. So, what happens is that when a person is walking and uh, you see there is a small obstacle sudden obstacle that comes the response changes as a function of when the stimulus is detected or in which stage of walking the stimulus is detected. This is uh, classical experiments uh, with uh, cats and uh, so let us assume that this is a cat uh, whose uh, this is the cat's paw you know this is the cat's uh, upper leg and lower leg and this is the paw right. Now, if a stimulus is applied what is the stimulus this could be a painful stimulus uh, quite literally a nail, but it can be you know even an air puff right. Suppose an air puff is started when the cat's uh, leg is in the air during the swing phase if during the swing phase the cat detects the presence of an air puff here or detects the some painful stimulus then what the cat will do is it will step over the obstacle and come put the leg here. Usually the leg would have come here later because of the obstacle the leg would come here why is this happening because the perturbation uh, is detected here I do not want to keep my leg on the obstacle or on the painful stimulus I want to avoid that. So, the leg is kept on uh, you know moved at that, but if the lay if the stimulus is applied during the stance phase. So, in this case what is happening the foot or the paw is on the ground. So, this is the stance phase is it not if the stimulus if the air puff is applied at the time of uh, stance phase what it does is immediately it withdraws and uh, you know takes the leg up. So, in one case it brings the leg forward and down and in the other case it takes the uh, leg up and, and flexes. So, that means the response is contact specific in both cases remember in both cases the stimulus is applied at the same point in the body here and in both cases the amplitude of the stimulus is the same which is an air puff 
right. Depending on what the context is whether you are in the swing phase or whether you are in the stance phase the response changes ok. So, such responses we also do this all the time even in humans if there is an obstacle depending on when you are detecting the obstacle the response will vary. Such uh, corrections uh, during uh, gait are called as corrective stumbling reactions these typically happen at uh, latency similar to pre-programmed reactions. So, these can be considered to be a form of pre-programmed reactions ok. Uh, another classical example before we end the class is uh, let us say that you know there is a sleepy classroom and uh, the teacher is uh, asking the students say you know uh, ok all of you are sleepy let us do some exercise you know uh, stand up down up down up down up down and then he says up up right. When they do that when an up is followed by another uh, up people will sit down if they are used to sitting down up you know sitting down and standing up if they are doing this in a cycle and suddenly when the teacher is saying up up right some you will see that many students will actually sit down for the second uh, this. this is another example of uh, uh, pre programmed reactions. So, in this case let us remember that you know it is not the specificity of the stimulus uh, or you are just hearing some noise you are not checking whether that is up or down immediately the person is uh, sitting the presence or absence or the trigger alone works ok. So, that is another example of pre programmed reactions. So, we have in this class so what we have seen are the features of the pre programmed reactions or in other words strongly dependent on instruction and the subject can pre program any uh, function and perturbation amplitude does not correlate well with uh, you know the response amplitude and vibrations can cause suppression of uh, the T reflexes or M1 or phasic stretch reflex, but does not cause uh, suppression of uh, the pre programmed reactions. So, these are the features and uh, there are corrections of uh, vertical posture that are specific to the mechanical effects of the perturbation ok and corrective stumbling reactions. So, whether you are stepping over an obstacle or whether you are taking removing the leg uh, from the obstacle depends on the context depends on when the perturbation is detected right and all these things happen at uh, latencies uh, typical of pre programmed reactions that can be considered to so they can be considered to be pre programmed reactions ok. So, with this we come to the end of this class on pre programmed reactions uh, in future classes we will be focusing on more voluntary or brain controlled movements ok. So, thank you very much. Mm -hmm.